Hello, everyone. Let's see if we switch over here. Everything looks like it's working. Welcome to Witchy Tuesdays. I'm Simorgu. I see Joxara, Titan, and Skunk in chat at the moment. And then a couple people lurking. Welcome. Thanks for watching. There we go. No. You know, it shouldn't be this hard to mute the other laptop, but it is. Joe Kazra, it was in yellow on the right side. Here, I'll show you. It is Thalanus over here on the right side in yellow. And on this screen, it's in the top right in red. So I'm not sure how long I'm actually going to be uh, streaming tonight. We, uh, one of our pet rats had to be put down earlier today, so we're kind of uh, not in very cheerful mood, so I'm not sure how long streaming is going to last today. But uh, ice games are up. I haven't yet to do my tutorial video on monk jumping. Um, I put a video up yesterday showing people doing the monk jump for the purples, but uh, didn't do a tutorial on how to do it yourself. I found out some things make it work better for me. As you can see, I just missed there. You have to be uh, decent level uh, of jump and abundant step, of course. And also, I actually use the pendant of time for the extra 10% over the chronoscope ship buff. That seems to all work together to make it where I can just get and then of course my greater heroism. If I do all that my jump it goes up to 41 and I can make it. You mean straight in front here? Skunk? This is the only way I've been able to consistently do it. I got it that time. Um, I did make another video showing how non-monks do it on Shaw, so just a mainly fighter um, can do it through the using skates and all that fun stuff. And I use the invisible mass on that ship over there in the distance to do that. I jump from the boathouse there up to that one of those two masts up to the ice platform you can't see to the other ice platform to this ice platform to get it that way. I find this to be a lot easier and uh, just hey Murray and you'll see there's a lot of people waiting um, inside the uh, this is the lobster, right? Yeah. No, leaky dinghy. This is the leaky dinghy. There's a lot of people in here. Yeah, skunk. That's what I was seeing. Um, the people who are really farming the purples do it this way, and they seem to do pretty well. Like Lin Shao here has been farming purples. Like every time I'm on, they're on here farming purples. The other trick is you duck into the leaky dinghy if there's not two instances, and you can. Uh, it only takes something like 40 seconds to uh, repop the purple rather than two minutes if you're still out in the uh, harbor. So that's another trick that actually Lin Xiao told me yesterday. Appreciate that assistance. 
This is the first time I've actually been able to do it. Um, I've tried in previous times, but I was never able to get it. So this time between being a higher level and having all the right stuff in place, it's been working. Obviously, I can't do this on my main my fighter because I don't have abundant step. I didn't try to see if I could do it with the uh, dragon wings twisted in. Yeah, that's the way I do. Um, if I'm on Shaw and I do the, I do the left mast. Most people do the right mast. I've tried to do the right mast, but since I l practice on the left mast, if I try the right mast, it screws me all up. So I'm better just sticking with my method. <laughs> than trying to do the other mast. It's a bit of a difference. Now, with this method, you only get purples. Um, that's all some people care about. But if you're just starting out, you may want some blues and whites. And you can use other methods to get blues and whites. This only gets you purples. But I thought I'd show this off here at the beginning. Uh, I might miss that. Nope, got it. It's a really narrow thing whether you miss or get it. And the fastest way I found to get back to the tavern is just to go this way, hop over that. Of course, not that way, not past the stairway, but hop onto that other pier, hop into the water once, and then up onto the stairs and up here. So, anyway, I just wanted to show that off as the first thing uh, for this stream, since I didn't get around doing the video yet. And uh, also, notice for people who are on here at the start, I will not be streaming the next two Tuesdays. So keep that in mind. Um, don't wait up for me the next two Tuesdays because I won't be here. I'll actually be out of the country. So there is that. And let's go back to Shaw. By the way, I do have it looks like the keyboard plugin is working and the dragon cam is on as well he's kind of hard to see at the moment ever since it's been so cold he's been spending more time on the bottom of the tank rather than up on his rocker in the uh, hammock but yeah 48 seconds out or 40 seconds out of the instance. Uh, the easiest thing to do is right there at Leaky Dingy, but wherever you do it, yeah. Which is, if you switch instances, the same still applies. So if you switch instances real fast, get the second coin, and then switch back instances, it won't have respawned. You have to wait 40 seconds out of that particular instance to spawn. That's a good point, Skunk. I do have a couple tutorial videos up on YouTube about the um, both the harbor jumping and the evening star skating. So if you'd like more detailed videos on explaining step by step all that stuff, you can see those on YouTube. And I got my skates on. What else do I need? I don't think Sean needs anything else, just the skates. Right. The other things you can do is like if you're a monk and need to refresh your key for the abundant step, if you stay in the tavern for long enough, your uses of meditation will actually refresh. You can drop out to like Haverdash or run it real quick and then you'll get a free rest at the end. It'll replenish everything. Um, I was using a jump clicky for a while that needed that. So here's the normal way of going. You have a path over there. If you jump low, I missed that ramp. You want to end up on that ramp anyway. That's the normal way of going that anybody who's done this for a little while probably doesn't use anymore. Um, it gets you mostly whites, which you don't need. Most people come up here and use this. If you want a quick blue, you can actually jump out and get this blue right here. That's the easiest blue to get. Uh, there is a white up there that you can get just by dropping down from 
where the ramp is. You can drop down the wall and get a white over there. You don't need skates or anything for that. Yeah, I couldn't get the script to work when I tried it, so I was doing it manually, which still is not a big deal um, to do. And of course I went through it. To do this jump this way, you need a fairly decent jump. Uh, you do not need Featherfall. Featherfall will mess you up because you have light gravity at this particular point. There we go. And you can actually come right here in this mast. There's a similar place in the mast next to it that other people use. Let's see if this person over here uses it. Nope, they're jumping the other way. Um, but there's different ways to do the jump. Um, one of these two masts works pretty well. And then, then you jump over to the ice ramp right here. Uh, you jump out a bit and line up for the next jump, though. You don't jump directly to the ramp, usually. That's how I learned it to do it. And you jump this one. You land in here, and you don't have much control, and you're always moving forward, so you want to get in a corner if you're waiting for any reason. I usually like to kill my momentum before going down the ramp. It helps, because sometimes you bounce off the ramp, and it doesn't work very well. And then, I don't know if i got enough speed for that. Jump. Got it. Jump there. Jump here. And... No. You can get your purple that way. And if you do this, the fastest way to get back is to uh, jump off the water and then jump on the ship. Like that. So that's just a quick... overview of how to get the ice games. I already used my tokens earlier for the skating, so I'm not going to go over that. Besides, it's pretty easy. The only trick is that you want to score low gives you a better chance to getting the low level recipes. So like if you want to fire resist one or a cold resist one, um, it's better to have a lower score. Although I was getting a lot of glaciations 54s. Um, I did get a couple fire ones, I think, this morning when I was running the skating. I was trying for a cold. And the reason you want those is because if you have store-bought cosmetics like this, you can put a plus 10 stacking fire resistance and a plus 10 stacking cold resistance on them, which can be very handy to have around, especially at lower levels. Um, you can also do some of the Stone of Change rituals on these, but then you have to bind them to character. And uh, I like the freedom of mind to account, so if I need to switch this cold resistance over to somebody else, I can. Otherwise, I think everybody, I, all my characters have the, cold, the spider cold mask, so I can put a fire resistance on several. And definitely put, remember to put your regular boots on, especially the fortification. I forgot the other day. Went into EE Lords of Dust and promptly got smited, so uh, yeah. Yeah, there's some things that works on, some things that doesn't. So keep that in mind as well. But for the most part, it works on uh, store-bought cosmetics. Not glamored, as I understand it from the forum post. Glamour stuff does not work. Oh, yes, yeah, so I guess I was missing an extra point of my jump. What am I jump? Ah, it jumps at 37. Yeah, you don't need a cap jump to get those do it the ice way, but yeah. If I had more cosmetics um, that I could switch out, I would probably put the was it combustion and glaciation or the two? I would probably put one of those on some stuff at higher levels so I could have it. But it's up to you how you use it. Uh, let's see, I haven't really played today at all. I did some jumping and skating, and that's about it. I have not actually done any questing, I don't think. Oh, and my newest fun toy. I paid two million plat for that. <laughs> ah. I played two million plat for that ribbon. I just happened to check the auction house and it was like 20 minutes left on it. And I was 
like holy cow those you can't get anymore and uh, I want one so and then I also bought a let's see was it wisdom yeah a three to four wizard upgrade tome for almost the same price so my bank is empty now I need to get on selling I don't know it's better to sell purples or burst kits or whatever but I need to start selling some stuff if I can to make up the uh, plat I just spent I'm way low now so on to questing I have no idea what I feel like doing today but did we make 80 yet? No, we're still close. Almost level 80 for the guild, which is nice. And nothing I really care to do. Oh, you want to see my favor? Yeah, I can show you a favor. It's like 4,300 at the moment. 4,335. Not quite there yet. I want to get to that 5K and get that plus 5 tome. You can see I've got a bunch of stuff on uh, Epic Normal that I need to get on Epic Elite, or Epic Hard that I need to get on Epic Elite. Several things I still haven't done yet. That's cool, Skunk. Yeah, if I could get back up to the 4 million mark amongst my characters, I'd be set for a while. So yeah, I've got these, uh, let's see, looks like Inspired Quarter I needed to get over to and do those on Heroic Elite. Some Shavarath ones I need to get on Heroic Elite. Subterrain, haven't done that. Some 12, oh, that's the new, I don't have that pack yet, never mind. Subterrain, Inspired Quarter. And then, uh, what's it called? Reaver's Refuge. I still need to finish those off. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing I did. Um, I had these weapons that were level, minimum level 21. I Icy Burst kitted them, and now they're level 18. So that solves my level 20 axe problem quite nicely. I still want, of course, the uh, anti-grade axe, but for now, this will do. That one didn't change because it was already 18. And that one changed as well. So slightly more DPS on it. And uh, I can equip it at 20 now. And then if I ever do get around to heroic TRing, then I'll be able to go ahead and wear those or use those at 18, which is a nice DPS boost. Because they still take they still retain their uh, epic weapon. So you get the plus one W, which is nice. Hey Blackstorm, how you doing? All right, so what are we gonna do today? Um, I'd like to get level 24. That's well within reach. I don't think there's gonna be a problem doing that. Just run a few things to get warmed up here, and then we'll see if any groups are up. For anything, I also posted a um, Spies in the House tutorial because a lot of people had questions on how to run Spies in the House. So that's on YouTube as well. Yeah, that's what I thought, uh, Skunk. Seems to be just at the right place to be worthwhile. If you take something 21, 22, and lower it to 20 or lower, then you got a. Uh, good thing to use right when you epic reincarnate. I mean, if you look at the base damage here, green steel is base damage rating of 17.4. That epic great X is 2310. So that's a decent decent boost 
in base damage rating, which of course means your criticals hit harder. From tropical heat to bitter cold. It is as if you were teleported leagues away. Grats, Titan. I'm going to be traveling this weekend, so I hope the uh, weather settles down. These arches have signal crystals attached on top. Are they simply decorative? With House Fjarland, one can Though you can see the rest of Stormreach through the skylights above, the light from outside does not reach this room. The only illumination comes from phosphorescent mushrooms. Hey Skunk, did you uh, get the uh, pinball game? And I finally got past that room I, had, I was stuck on last night on my Vita earlier. By the way, if you didn't see that, I s did stream for my PS4 last night for a bit. Um, really fun game. Uh, was it Rollers of the Realm? Something like that. It's a pinball RPG mashup game. That's pretty fun. I enjoy pinball. I enjoy RPGs, so it's a neat little game. It is on PlayStation 4, on Vita. I don't know if it's on PS3. It's also on Steam. It's a fun little game. I really have to put a consecrate down for this. The destruction of this make believe scorpion has also extinguished the mark of shadow. The illusion <laughs> yeah. is gone. It's a fun little game. I can see myself playing that on vacation a bit if I take my Vita. It's cross save too, so you can. Uh, Transfer your save from your Vita to your PS4 and back, which is nice. You can pick up where you left off, you don't have to start over. I think I got it for $3 on a PS4 flash sale over the weekend, um, and that came with both the Vita and PS4 versions. On Steam, it was $10 when we looked yesterday. I'll probably wait for the summer sale or something to get it on there. It's a fun game, though. of shadow in this chamber are restoring the illusionary giant's health. I have my last real day of work tomorrow. I turn my laptop in on Thursday, and when I come back from vacation, I won't have a job. Fun stuff. So that's what I'll be doing when I get back off and start looking pretty heavy. Stream is too small to provide any income at the moment, so that's not going to happen. It's going to have to be some sort of job, day job. I do want, since I'll have some free time though, I do want to start streaming more. We'll see how that goes with everything, but it'd be nice. Yeah, thanks for the link, Skunk. It's a neat little game. I streamed it for, what, two hours last night? And I was only going to stream it for a little while, and then, but it was like one of those, well, I got to this next level, let's just do that next level, and we'll try that. Then I got stuck on the final two-part level of a uh, location. Then the rat thing happened, and it wasn't a good night. So 
As I said, we're pretty tired here and we probably won't be streaming for as long as I usually do. The Fialan Chapter House must have been closed as a precaution during the Grand Gala. The ballroom is on the far side of the Chapter House and it seems rather unlikely. Next to the security gates, a large dragon mark of shadow is embedded into the wall. If it were to activate, you would not be able to destroy it as you did with the marks in the Elysian Age. Yeah. You can finesse the ball, though. So, I don't know if you noticed that when I was doing that last night. I don't do it very often, but there's some pieces. Um, that forest location I was playing, in order to get the key, I had to do that. Um, you can finesse the ball, which is nice. You can't bump the table that I can tell, but you can finesse the ball. It is necessary. I'll, the the way the rooms are set up, they're you know they're pinball tables, but they're they have the feeling of like a what almost like Dungeon Defenders kind of feel to it, maybe. They have that you know dungeon crawly feel to it. It's like you're if you're in the inn, you're in an inn, and there's stuff there like tables and chairs you can break, and uh, there'll be doors and windows and furniture and different levels and stuff. It's really neat. They did a good job with it. I'm glad I went ahead and tried it. It's one of those things, you know, Steam has so many games coming out all the time that it's... I think I remember seeing the announcement that that was out. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Don't know what that is. And uh, now I kind of think I should have checked it out earlier. Oh, well. But that facade does not fool you. You easily see through to the malicious tiefling underneath. Yeah, that's the... Th I just remember the thing I don't like about trying to sell IC Burst kits is it's all manual in-person trades. You can't just put it up in the auction house and let it sell. You have to do it yourself. So if anybody's on Thelonis and wants to buy wholesale purple coins or moats or icy burst kits or whatever, let me know. Be happy to dump a lot of that stuff on somebody for plat. I only have about a day and a half to try to play and then I'm out for a while, so I don't remember when the game's in, but I'm going to be missing part of them. So I'm not going to be able to stockpile a bunch of stuff. I had like 500 coins, purples, just sitting in my bank. That I never got around to crunching or turning in last time. So, you know. There is that. Just making sure the virtual keyboard is working. It screws up sometimes. I don't know if I'm going to keep that on all the time, but I liked it for the uh, tutorials to get a sense of what you need to do, especially with the tricky things like jumping. So it would help to see... May have to look into doing a different way to keep the screen a little more clean. I have a bunch of stuff on there right now. Just playing around with stuff though. The dragon will be more interesting when it gets warmer. Oh yeah, skunk at that rate, you might as well sell the perps. I think about a, maybe a stack or two, 
I have 100 perps left. I didn't turn them all in. Oh, and by the way, I am so glad that multiple turn in works now. That saved my mouse finger a heck of a lot of clicking. I ran some stuff I don't normally run the other day, and I, now I can't remember what it was. Oh, it was some of the, uh, let's see, High Road Chain and the Evening Star, Battle for Evening Star Chain. Ran that stuff on E. It was a little rough in parts. As I say, I got one shot it on. Oh, it started with Lords of Dust too. I got one shot started on Lords of Dust. Yeah, it'll be great for Cove too. You're right, Skunk. I got so sick of converting stuff and having to make sure I got the right count because yet not every click counts because there's a slight delay and sometimes you're off. And oh, uh, multiple turn-ins would be awesome for that. So much easier to upgrade. I need to get my flask and run them all the way update, upgraded for the restoration and the heal, but mostly the restoration. Now I'm starting to look for axes that might work or wraps for my monk or something for other characters where I can icy burst them and get them down to uh, solar to stumbling flaming that uh, something like that for example would be great on oh, my cleric if I remember to save it let's go ahead and flag that now I'll icy burst it'll be flaming burst and icy burst it won't that be fun get you either way Let's go and not get a uh, epic anti great X piece that I need. The sounds and smells I don't know how many dozens of times I've run this and not gotten that yet, but Perhaps won't cause a to the point where, eh, whatever. I've got other ways around it now. I don't really care. Anybody else have anything funny, amusing, exciting happening? My day, past couple days have been kind of crap, so looking for good stuff and inspirational, fun stuff. Because today has not been a good day at all. The stench of smoke walks down the corridor. Oops. Yeah, that's kind of an important uh, thing to miss there, Skunk. I hadn't been worrying about tears on most stuff. Just get the base item. It was at least better than what I had at the time. But then I made a lot of stuff for a lot of... I know some people like will just take build one of everything and uh, share it between characters through the shared bank. I like... Having my characters uh, 
Hold on a second. Excuse me. I like having my characters fully geared all the time and not having to worry about swapping most of the time, so. I made a bunch of like level 16 spy glasses and a couple level 12s, a couple level 8s, and various stuff like that. Oh, and if you're going to be jerks and block the entrance. Yeah, I'm just all distracted today and not playing like I usually do. I love my level 20 epic spyglass. I did take it all the way up just to get the slot for the master's gift. It's the only reason I wanted it up that high. I didn't really care otherwise. But it's really handy to have that uh, for leveling epic reincarnating as I have been. It works really well. If you notice the difference in the graphics, I have uh, post-processing off because of all the ice. I've been skating and jumping and stuff, so it's just too freaking bright for me. I'm light sensitive anyway, and that stuff is just so very bright, I can't handle it. I know last year I actually put sunglasses on to do some of the skating. I also usually do it when I first wake up, so I don't really up to handling that bright of light first thing in the morning. But I found that turning post processing off fixes that issue. So. Everything's dull enough where I can actually see it. As you turn the valve, you hear a metallic clang in the distance. Yeah, I thought I'd get hit. Yeah, I didn't actually start my Rome Flask on this character. I started on my other character, my monk I was on earlier. I finished his Rome. And I'm like, you know what? That would be go really great on Shaw, too. I should get one for Shaw. And uh, so I got it started, but I didn't get enough to do all the way up to heal and restore. So I'll be happy when the Cove comes back again for that. I know some people don't really like the really don't like the ice games. They really don't like the Cove, and I think they're neat, different things to be in the game. So it's not just the same thing all the time. I mean, there's some variances. Yeah, I agree, Skunk. It's really bad on default settings. And Bloom is the worst thing to ever be invented for any game ever. I hate Bloom lighting. I saw somebody playing uh, Dragon Age Inquisition on the PS4 the other day, and the lighting, that Bloom lighting is horrible. So unnecessarily bright. Just like uh, Oblivion. Oblivion was the first game I really noticed it in. They tried so hard to get the lighting right, and it just looks awful. Way too bright blooms. Yeah. Not a fan. It's really, I'm really sad because I usually like the uh, water effects in this game. I think they're pretty neat. But, uh, yeah. Oh, also, as a side note, I was going to say this and I forgot. 
that turning post-processing off solves the lag problem in black lock. So that means it pretty much is the complex scene with a complex ship, the water, and then all the lighting that's causing it, because when you turn the post-processing off, it's fine. If you're careful, catch up to Roderick Nettle and still let sleeping dogs lie. Another reason to have uh, post-processing off, and then of course the purple haze, it solves that problem as well, especially in uh, what goes up. Yeah, it's something that I don't know what they're testing on, but they shouldn't be using it. If they see what I'm seeing, they wouldn't be using it. It doesn't look great at all. It looks horrible. I don't know if it's just built into the engines everybody's using or what, but... Or it's a ch cheap, as in cost of uh, either engine resources, like video card resources, or CPU, I guess, or just uh, engine custom coding. It just blooms there, so you just use it because it's there, and uh, you don't even think about the effects in various things, various people's setups. I'm just using a laptop, so I don't, I mean, it's not like I'm using something special, but I also saw that the PS4 Dragon Age was on uh, TV, so there's that too. I don't know. Just not something I'm a fan of. I also hope that having the virtual keyboard on get, gives a sense of the stuff I'm triggering. I don't know if it, how easy it is to tell what abilities I'm using and when, but... I guess if you don't know what's happening, it looks like I'm just standing there whacking on the guy. But I am triggering abilities fairly regularly. Hey Red Piety, how's it going? Here maybe flaming dazing. Uh, not really, but I'll take it. Yeah, I'm actually using two laptops at the moment. So I'm playing on one laptop and I have the other one next to it, and that's where I'm reading chat and monitoring the video quality and such. I have run uh, HDMI to my TV before and run it that way and chats up on the TV, but I actually like it next to me because sitting this close to the laptop, it actually blocks most of the TV and it's harder to see the chat that way than it is just to glance over and see the laptop next to me. So. I might see about moving to my office for streaming. We'll see. Depends on how much I stream and all that, but I've got two monitors up there off of my work laptop that I won't be having anymore, so it's possible I just use two monitors up there and do it that way. We'll see. Haven't quite decided yet. 
so if you notice um, where my chat box ends and I didn't used to have this last row of hot bars on the right over here this is actually my TV layout I have a layout set up for TV because some of the things get cut off on the edges so what I did was I went onto the TV and then reset everything to being on around all the edges where I could see it and then uh, I saved that layout that's what I did otherwise I'm running in the same same whereas I am it's just that uh, the TV monitor you know you know what I'm trying to say I can't think of what I'm trying to say exactly but like the edges cover part of the screen so it doesn't really show everything I'm gonna keep those for the moment yeah what the heck I'll keep that too not much to sell that run UI layout load and UI layout save I'll go ahead and go over to the other computer here oops Like that. I'll type it in the chat without the period, of course, leading. Type that into your chat box in game. And whatever the name is you want. I think if you don't put a name, it defaults to the resolution. So you can have different layouts for different resolutions, which is handy. If you switch, like, uh, isn't it Bonnie that switches resolutions a lot? I think it is. But uh, my TV and my laptop run at the same resolution. It's 1080p. So it isn't a big deal to switch between them. It's just that on the TV, things get cut off little bit not a lot and if you want the layout I'm using now I can link it I think I still have a link to that I'd have to look it up real quick um, let's see where is it It'd probably be on this computer And it's that. Throw that in the chat too. So if you're interested in the layout I have going on right now, that's you can download that, put it in your oh you know, wherever that directory is under my documents, Dungeons and Dragons Online. UI, something like that. And uh, you can do that. So you can trade those between people and computers if you want everything to be consistent. I always use that right after uh, Epic Reincarnate to set everything back up right. Unfortunately, it only saves the layout of the hotbars. It doesn't save what's in them. So you still have to manually put everything back in your hotbars. I really wish there was a way to save all that stuff. That would save me so much time when I epic reincarnate. That's so like it can be a good half hour of okay, making sure everything's right where it was in every little slot in every little hot bar. Um, yeah. I would like there to be a different way, but as far as getting them all set back at this way, it's instant. And it does the same thing with chat windows and uh, I think all your settings too. I'm not sure about custom colors for channels and stuff but it does save your um like your hint settings and stuff like that so it's most things it saves it saves your lock status which i think of your lock status on your bars because if you save it with your bars unlocked then they stay unlocked if you save it with your bars locked then it's locked little things like that but yeah that's really handy for uh keeping things consistent and from character to character if you want the same layout on all your characters you can do that as well I, I have two main layouts this is the one I've moved to I have an old layout um, I think last week I 
brought up my cleric and uh, my cleric and I think my uh, bard last week um, showed their layouts so I was going over those characters for some reason I don't remember why but uh, they have different layouts they're my old style layouts where all the bars are at the bottom I've got two chat windows one on each side that are obviously smaller than this one Nope, I'm not going to spies yet. Go ahead and show the lag free black lock with post processing turned off. Do you notice, Skunk, any difference when you have the uh, bloom on and off with black lock? That layout is especially helpful for those of us that are a little bit CDO and uh, want everything to line up because you spend all that time lining stuff up and then you save it that way. And then it, you can be guaranteed that you don't have to spend that half hour or whatever lining everything back up again. Of course, it only works at the same resolution, so if you're not running 1080p, my layout won't do much for you. It'll be squished. The, the bars will be off a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll run a test someday just to see. I don't feel like doing it tonight. See if Bloom's the problem or if it's just the post processing in general. in here is not bad. Uh, other laptop definitely has a lesser card than this one. I run pretty much everything uh, 1080p, which is since it's a laptop, you know, I really have to go with the native resolution of the monitor that's built in. I can't, um, without, of course, hooking an external monitor and doing that, but Assuming you're running at 1080p, everything runs great. Haven't had any problems with anything not running on. Kill the graphics card settings. I do have a fan stand underneath it to help with cooling. But in general, it's pretty decent. I'm really liking the newer mobile NVIDIA cards. They've been working a lot better than the Radeons in my experience recently with the last couple laptops I've had. Although I am considering going back to desktop. At this point, I can't justify it with uh, not having a job and streaming not taking off very quickly, so. If my streaming takes off and I can actually get enough money off of that, then I will uh, probably get a laptop set up or a desktop set up and uh, 
go top of the line or close to. But at the moment, I haven't found anything. I can't really run on this. And really, there's not much. I mean, I, I've played some of the newer stuff, but not that much. I, what was it? Oh, the new Tomb Raider I played when it first came out. Well, not when it first came out, but I had it on holiday sale for 75% off or whatever. And uh, it was beautiful on this. It looked great. Ran perfectly fine, didn't have any problems with it. So that's an example of a newer game I've played that. Uh, this card looks at it and says, Yeah, that's fine. I can do that. No problem. No graphics issues that I noticed. No slowdowns. I think everything was on top of the line. It's not like I'm running, you know, 3D marker or something that would really kill it. I remember my uh, Windows experience for dummies ratings for this. It's pretty high, as I recall, but I don't remember what it was. I keep, I mean, I have a spare power supply or three in a case and some case fans and some other stuff just sitting around. I've got some of that stuff on clearance from various, or going out of business sales for various stores and such, thinking that I was going to buy, build another desktop, but I never did. I switched over to laptops and uh, I've been happy with that. Laptops and external hard drives. So much less room taken up, so much easier to move and carry and all that stuff. And there are some BC laps up there. I've been fairly conservative in getting the mid range ASUS models. This current one I don't actually got off a of group on refurb, and it's been great. Doesn't have the uh, issue my older one has. But that one had a known issue that they never did fix. Even when I sent it back to them to be fixed, they didn't really fix it. The way I understand it, the something either audio or graphics card or something got uh, would get overheated, and there was a weak solder joint, and then all of a sudden you get a burst of static, and the screen goes gray, and whatever you're doing doesn't happen anymore. Occasionally, it still does that. It also sometimes happens if you plug or unplug USB. For the most part, it works. <laughs> yeah, skunk. I used to be a lot more into keeping track of all the cards and being somewhat bleeding edge on tech, but anymore, I mean, really DDO doesn't require that, and I don't play much else that's any worse in terms of greedy for graphics or CPU power, so... Just have a couple SSDs in these laptops. They both have an SSD as a boot drive and then a uh, large 
hard drive is a storage. That's all I need. Of course, I do have two of them sitting right next to each other that are both mine, and I do work on both of them at the same time quite a bit. Work. I mean, I do stuff on both of them at the same time. A lot of times I'll have twitch up on one and be doing something else. Yep. Although there are laptops with uh, SLI to graphics card in them. They cost a bundle. And I wouldn't want to set that thing on my lap ever. That would be uh, painful, I'm sure. Heat-wise. But, you know, if you're into that sort of thing, there are laptops. They also tend to be huge monstrosities. Even bigger than the ones I have. Which are pretty big. They're supposed 17 inch uh, laptops, but. And I am definitely on the Nvidia side anymore. I do. I'm not in the. Well, I'm in the Intel and Nvidia side, not the AMD ATI Radeon stuff. Firmly in the NVIDIA camp, in the Intel camp. Just like I'm firmly in the Western Digital camp and not the Seagate camp. <laughs> yeah, I've run stuff on my lap before on a... Well, I had that uh, Alienware for a while, which, by the way, don't buy Alienware ever. Their support is horrible. Worse than Dell generic is. Um... And they're part of Dell, and it's worse than Dell, if you can believe that. Anyway, in my experience. But yeah, I had that little one, even that little 13-inch one. Put out the heat on your lap, and it was not comfortable after a while. Start bringing a magazine or something with you to have some sort of insulation. But, you know, every time I go to PC Parts Picker and start picking out parts to fit my case and everything, I ended up with $2,000 worth of stuff. I'm like, yeah. $2,000 stuff to play DDO on. Can't really see that. When what I have works just fine. Hey, Titan, enjoy your food. If you want to call it that. I don't consider it. Taco Bell food, but, you know. Yeah, and I have people that I know that swear by AMD and NVIDIA, and I just, my experiences with them were not pleasant, so. Just like some people swear by Seagate, and my experience with Seagate are not pleasant. I've had much more luck with Western Digital. But, you know, different people have different experiences, so... Like, I would never buy uh, another Alienware. And uh, I would never buy another Dell. Which, Alienware is Dell now, so... It's sort of redundant, but not really, because they are separate brands and marketed differently. And supported differently. Sort of. But uh, my Asus laptops have been pretty good. I've always loved Asus for motherboards and such, but... I seem to have mi re arguably minor issues with uh, my laptops from them. I'm tempted to go MSI next time if I get another gaming laptop. I think I'm going to try the equivalent MSI. The other thing they have is you know, they have backlit keyboards, but you can't change the colors. And so they're white, which is annoying. I would rather them be red. Um, 
I don't want to change the colors a lot, I just want them to be red instead of white. And of course there are places that will customize that for you. And they'll swap out the white LEDs for red ones and all that stuff where you can do it yourself. But, eh. Not really interested in that. What I want is, I love, that's one thing I loved about the Alienware was that you could customize the keyboard. Not individual keys, but they had like three or four zones on the keyboard you could customize different colors and I made them all red and I was happy. That's what I wanted. And the other thing is the Asus keyboards don't light up at boot. Not until you've logged into Windows. So typing your password sometimes, because you know it's laptop chiclet keys, so you're not necessarily sure you're on the right keys when you're typing, especially first thing in the morning. Yeah lights don't come on until you've actually logged in. Which is really stupid. I don't understand that at all. Let's make a light-up keyboard that doesn't light up until you're logged into Windows. Uh, okay. Why would you do that? Just make it light up by default. Put the configuration for how bright it is in the BIOS, at least at boot. And then once you log in, you can load your profile for anything else. But at least turn the stupid things on. First thing. Hey, Ozzy. How's it going? And, you know, I, I know that my first laptop was one of the earlier ones, but this one is like several generations later, and they still haven't fixed that. Like, really, guys? Of all the things you could do, you think one of the design goals would be have a freaking keyboard that lights up at boot like it's supposed to. My Logitech keyboard on my laptop, or my work laptop upstairs does that. It lights up at boot. My Alienware light lit up at boot, but yeah, Asus doesn't light up at boot. No apparent reason, just doesn't do it. That's good to hear, Ozzy. Glad somebody's doing well today. Oh, there's a bunch of uh, groups up now. Let's see. Uh, the only thing that's really tempting is follow truth, and I really feel like doing a raid tonight. I want something I can sleep through, because I'm not playing like I'm as good as I normally do. I can tell. I'm not triggering all the abilities and not paying attention. So. In fact, I'm probably going to... Let's see, how much do I need? Just over 100. Uh, probably run spies next. Yeah, probably just solo spies. That'll give me XP I need without too much pain, hassle. I think I can pretty much do spies on autopilot now. We'll see how it goes. I don't really feel like doing a Druid's Chain or anything else. We'll just and displays. <laughs> yeah, Skunk, I wonder if sometimes if that sort of thing is 
actually on purpose. So you have to go to the dealer and have them do it, so you can't just do it yourself. And how much of it is just, you know, nobody wrote the requirement to say that the battery had to be easily accessible. That wasn't one of their design goals, it wasn't one of the requirements. That happens all the time. I was do I was doing uh, some requirement stuff in my job here and you'd be amazed what people leave off or try to put in. That doesn't make any sense. And I know a couple of my friends do engineering drawings and uh, the guy I'm actually gonna see when I'm out of the country here does uh, underwater robot engineering. And yeah, you'd be amazed what people do or don't do in the requirements to uh, yeah they leave off the most important things that they think is important but they don't put it in the requirements they just assume you know it so yeah actually engineers can do math they do math a lot that's their job I uh, took some engineering classes in college and uh, it was a lot of math none of which oh you know what I forgot to do I forgot to change back oh, what was I doing did I really change back off of that oh man I am asleep today let's try that again with the right stuff going so yeah yeah it some of the stuff he talks about and some of the stuff he shows sometimes is awesome some of I mean just the stuff he has to think about in terms of materials and the weight limits and size limits and stuff is just incredible. It's fascinating sometimes hearing him talk about that stuff. Another friend of mine does uh, commercial chillers, so basically the air conditioning units on top of commercial buildings. He draws those. He's not the engineer, he's the drafter, but he does those. And then another guy does facilities mainly. That's what he does in engineering drawings. And he's designed fire um, suppression systems and stuff. Well, there's a difference between being a math theoretical mathematician and being an applied mathematician, which is an engineer, to, in my estimation. My dad was an electrical engineer. I know several engineers. And uh, I do not agree with your statements about engineers being bad at math. Oh, what the heck? I joined a user channel the other day, and it's a bit interesting, different way to find uh, groups' requests. I actually failed one of my engineering finals. That was fun. I done great throughout the entire rest of the class, but when it came to the final, I just, yeah, did not, I don't know if I didn't get enough sleep or what, but not happen. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much, skunk. Yeah. I think, you know, everybody has their specialty and what they need to get along for their job and it's not the same as everybody else necessarily oh, I hated discrete math hated it I also hate the class I failed or not I didn't fail the actual class I failed the final was structures all about load bearing floors and stuff and it was not fun didn't enjoy the class in the first place, and didn't enjoy the mainly the final even more. Hated that class. I was in architecture at the time.
Yep. I got stuck. I don't I remember how I got suckered into architecture, but it was not for me. I don't have the ego for it. And uh, I'm not that creative. So the whole drawing freehand thing was beyond me. Drafting I could do. I, drafting was fun. I love drafting. I had a lot of fun doing that. But freehand sketching? No, thank you. Not interested. I might go back into doing instruction if I can find a uh, online only place that's hiring for instructors. I've done that in the past and it's worked out. I don't want to give up my work from home status though, that's the big thing. It's going to be hard to find a job with that, I think. I haven't been looking too closely, but from what I've seen. That attack pattern doesn't look right. Yeah, I still have the stupid staff. Let's get back to the root right weapon here. Oh, I want the bonus XP. I might as well. Well, yeah. Some of the stuff people got away with in architecture was... I get really annoyed when people are all high and mighty pretentious about art. And a lot, there was a couple people that were like that in uh, architecture. And I just could not stand it, and I I didn't buy it. I thought they were just all bullcrap and didn't uh, agree with them. But they ended up being the darlings of the department. So whatever. It was like it doesn't didn't matter as much. No, oh, they got too hung up on the aesthetic beauty of the form, crap, and not the. It's a building. Does it have entrances, and exits, and rooms and bathrooms and stuff? Okay, cool. You're good. You're done. You're good. It's a building. People had to get all pretentious about. Well, this building represents this, blah, 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 blah. No, it doesn't. Like I said, I didn't have the ego or for that. Oh, yeah, I made the jump accidentally. It does make it easier to open the valve here. Uh, maybe. Dude will get off my back and let me let me open it. Come on. Thank you. You come and make a scribble and then say it represents some bull crap and then get away with it. It's like, no. You just scribbled some crap down on paper. That's not artistic at all. That's marketing. Like, what's his name? Duchamp, who signed a urinal and called it art. No, dude, the guy who made that urinal. He's the artist. He did the mold. You're just a hack. I didn't like art theory either. Art appreciation, any of that stuff. I should have gone into jewelry making or something practical and more fun.
Alright guys, you're getting me annoying. Yeah, that kind of crap. Yeah, I mean, I, I love part of my job recently but it was delving into spreadsheets and analyzing data and doing this, that, and the other with it to show this, that, and the other and do some light macro coding and stuff like that. And I really enjoyed that stuff. But I'm not the kind of person who can be coding every day. I have to be not coding some days. I don't want to look at code every day. I don't want to do all the math every day. I want to do other stuff too. So it's really hard for me to just do one thing over and over again every day like that. You hear a woman's voice asking for help up above. Kayla deftly climbs her way out of the sewer, pausing once to look back and wave her thanks. Oh, jeez, come on, guys. What is with you today? Hit me. You're not usually that bad. So many times this jump takes. Um, maybe one. If I can get off of there. Let me off of there. Thank you. Not bad. I thought that was going to be more annoying today. I've thought about, uh, Going into security. I have a couple people I know that are in security and they seem to have a lot of fun doing stuff. Which includes encryption and all that fun stuff. Penetration testing and all that stuff. But then again, I don't want to be stuck looking at log files all day either. So. You know. had too many in theory this should work but in practice it doesn't or I like to say in the real world or here in reality that doesn't work had a lot of discussions like that at work in theory what you're saying makes sense in reality it doesn't too many people live tangentially to reality I think that's the problem In other news, I got some glowing juggling balls the other day. I wanted them for the trip. I'm gonna get back into juggling again. It's another one of my hobbies that comes and goes. I want to get my quadcopter 
up and working too. Do some fun stuff with that. I've still got a Lego X-Wing and a Lego Ecto-1 to put together. What else do I have? Plenty of board games to play. Let's see if I work my way through some of that while I... In between jobs. Uh, probably ransacked on these chests anymore. Well, maybe not. Oh, that looks like Ransack just to me. One more put me almost to level, and then I'll find something else to do. How long did that take me? 15 minutes? That's not horrible, I guess. I'm distracted as I was. Yeah. That's what other people are going to be doing. Poi or fire spinning. Um, hooping juggling. There's going to be a bunch of us in the same room on the boat. Probably with the lights low-ish doing that stuff, so that'll be fun. I'm not really very far past through Ball Cascade. I can do a couple other things, but I can pass and do some other stuff, but I haven't got into the really fancy stuff like uh, I want to, uh, I really want to learn Mill's Mess, which is going to take a while. I've tried to get my head around how that works, and it just hasn't happened yet. But then again, it took me a long time to figure out basic juggling anyway, so not expecting a miracle. Learned juggling from a book many, many years ago. My dad and I did it together at the time. We did some simple pass back and forth tricks and stuff like that. Last in the last year, I ordered some uh, clubs and rings to start practicing with, and scarves. I never did scarves. Do a YouTube search for Mills Mess. There's a bunch of juggling video tutorials out there. Um, look at Mills Mess, especially one with glowing balls at, in the dark. It looks really cool. It's a really neat pattern. Um, I just haven't wrapped my head around how I do it. I'm one of those people that I, I have to do it to really understand it. And it's not an easy thing to do. What else did I get? I also got some new juggling bags. Oh, and I got a devil stick, a, a real devil stick, or whatever they call it. So the ones we used in college were like the beginner ones that are much easier to work with. These are the ones that are actually tapered. And man, it's a, a lot different than I remember it being. <laughs> yeah. That is correct. Mills mess. You got it, skunk. I can't remember who it is. One guy has, uh, I think, blue glowy balls, and he does a really good tutorial on it. But even just watch anybody doing a demo of it, and it's neat. I actually have a, uh, there's a juggling app on my Android tablet that you punch in different patterns, and it'll show you how to do them with a little wireframe figure. And even that. You know, just wireframe, so it's very basic. It's still hard to wrap my head around how I'm supposed to do that. I might have one or two of those favorite that I can pop up after this and maybe look for a second while I'm talking about something else. If I can handle multitasking today, which I might not be able to. We'll see. But yeah, it's a fun thing to look at. It's an impressive trick. 
it's basically doing a three ball cascade but crossing your arms in the middle of it you cross and uncross your arms while you do it very neat And feel free to put if you find a link to the Mills Mask, feel free to post it so other people can look at it if they don't want to actually Google for it. Someday might be one of the juggling conventions just to see all the people doing stuff. I watched some videos of the various conventions, and there's some fun stuff there. But juggling conventions are expensive. Because you really need a pretty big building that has pretty wide open space to, for all the things to fly and not hit everybody. I don't feel like dealing with these guys right now. I'm just going to bypass them. See if I can do that without too much problem today. And I'm not going to worry about the extra 2% XP either. I don't feel like making that jump. Let's see if we can just power through this one. I'll click that after I do this and see if that's one of the ones I was talking about. Yeah, that's probably the right one then. The first time you see that, it's like, whoa, what the heck is he doing? And then... I understand the basics of it. I just don't understand me physically doing it. Like I actually have to successfully complete it to understand how to do it. I can't just look and say, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. So, yeah. I just want to get into five ball at some point. Four ball too. I I've actually have done four balls before, but it's doing two balls with each hand. That's the way I've done four ball. I haven't done it. Actually, a cascade with it. Ah. Uh, I'll look at it after this quest and see. Um, earlier, it was like the beginning, yeah, around this time last year, I think I, because I met up with some people who did some juggling and got back into it for a little bit. I was like, you know, I should get some more more props and stuff. And I've always wanted to try clubs, and then I promptly knocked myself on the head and trapped my fingers and all the stuff you do when you're doing clubs for the first time and said, ow, I don't want to do this right now. And then rings are tricky because it's hard to do them outside because of the wind. Especially, I have light, lightweight, cheap practice ones. And, uh, yeah. Try not to spend too much. Yeah. No. Um, let's see, what have I seen people do in person? Uh, a guy did two racquetballs and a bowling ball. That was interesting. Um... I think somebody did a machete. I want to say something did something that was actually on fire, but I don't remember for sure. I have done just random stuff you pick up off a desk, like a stapler and a tape dispenser and something else, a pen cup or something like that. It's easier when all the objects are 
roughly the same size and shape and weight. I used to use little bean bags. I got pretty proficient at those. They're nice and heavy and easy to work with. Uh, this one guy had little one-up mushrooms that were really light and hard to juggle for me. They were way too light. Um, and then I, I did get a new set of just practice bags that are bigger and more more like stage balls kind of thing. And then the glowy ones I have are more like stage balls. They're actually practice ones. They're cheap. They're not $100 a piece. Can't believe the prices of some of that stuff. These are like 15 bucks a piece, not $100 a piece or more. Yeah, it was. Well, it was racket balls. It wasn't racket. I've seen people do rackets before too. That's more like clubs, I think. But yeah, it was just two racket balls, like tennis balls, um, and uh, the bowling ball. That was impressive. It was a grain. It was a light bowling ball. It wasn't like a 16 pounder. It was an eight or whatever, light one. But he was still, he was playing it up a bit. He was being showy, but he still was definitely feeling that one a lot more than the other two. Yeah. Yeah, if you get it, yeah. They actually sell, like, you know, the cheap, crappy Circulate Soleil stuff brand, and they sell the, here's the equivalent of the Circulate de Soleil performance stuff brands. And that stuff is expensive. There's some, like, Italian companies that make clubs at $250 a pop or whatever. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to drop these things. A lot. I have to learn this. I don't want anything expensive. So I just got some. There was a local company that evidently had a decent reputation that I ordered from. And, uh, yeah, it worked out. I didn't need anything fancy. I just wanted some newer stuff that wasn't worn out. Like my old bags are pretty worn. They're starting to leak the filling and that sort of thing. The new ones ended up being a lot bigger. Because, I mean, the show balls are like two and a half, three inches. They're big. That's cool. I remember the old uh, variety shop in town where I grew up. That was fun. Never knew what you're going to find, kind of stuff. And I remember always reading comics and stuff in that Johnson Smith catalog with all the magic tricks and practical jokes and stuff, all that stuff. I was always into that. Never really got any of it, but and when it, whenever you actually did get it, it was all a lot more disappointing than it sounded in the description. But some fun stuff. Uh, why did he not get tripped? He exhausted me, the jerk. I like a lot of stuff I do. I just I do it now and then, and don't do it very often. Full time. I have been trying to pick back up juggling this week, at least get a couple hundred catches in a row, just to get back in practice before I. Go to an event and try to show off and then fail miserably. Which I still might do, but at least I'll have some practice first. anything anyway. 43. I need 50 to level. What 
What's going on? If he's not too far into that Vaughn 3, that would be a good one to run. And grab my reward real quick. Sure, that sounds good. Should be able to check out that video while I'm running in this quest. This should take me a level, I hope, and then that should be it for tonight, I think. As I said, I'm we're still bummed out because we lost our pet earlier and uh, just not feeling it. Still kind of bummed out. Still have the dog, three cats, two rats, and a bearded dragon, which should be on camera. Yeah, you can sort of see him there in the bottom left. Let's see. That's not the window I wanted. There we go. Where's that link? Copy link. Paste it here. Mills Mess Tutorial Slow Motion. Oh, it's doing it again. Well, YouTube's being stupid again on that computer. It will not let me watch that video at the moment. So I'll check it out over on this other computer here in a second. Wow, did it really interrupt the stream? Yeah, I tried to get it where you could see it, but it wasn't too distracting from the game stuff, but it's probably in the wrong balance at the moment. I'll change that in a second when I get the quest turn. Let's see. First of all, YouTube. Oh, that was... what? How did I get there if I was on... there it goes. Yeah, that's it. Yep, that's Mill's Mess. You can see the slow-mo of how he does it, but yeah. Alright, let's try to run through this quest here. And let's see... I want to go to OBS and adjust the... Transparency, it's 50% right now. Let's go. Oops. There. Just for the moment. Does that help you see? Double mail. Eberron. House K. Jungle of Kyber. Why am I even looking at chess? I don't need chess. I need to catch up with dude. Let's see, do I have a... I don't have a time. Looks like I'll get pretty good XP out of this. Oops. 36...
Yeah, it's uh, that black bar you see is part of the tank. If you look under that to the left, you should see the dragon there. He's kind of pancaked on the ground at the moment. I, it's just too cold. So he's trying to hunker down and stay warm, even though his light's above him, I don't know. He may also not be feeling good because he's shedding. Not sure what he's doing at the moment. When it's warmer, he's actually up on that rock or on the hammock up there, and you can actually see him better. But, uh... At the moment, not very clear what's going on. Just gonna run. Oh, I need to turn that back on. You stand amidst a scene of it's not Featherfall time. The inevitable has already this way. I just want the XP from this anyway. I don't care if we run through it. But then he's going this way for the rare, so I don't know. Yeah, they can go pretty hey, fast when they want to. You just see them sitting there. We take him upstairs, let him run around on the carpet once in a while, and he can really move when he wants to. He looks really funny running, too. It's amusing. He usually does weird poses in his hammock. Look funny. I was hoping he'd do something like that for stream, but being cold blooded and it being cold out, even with the heat lamp on him, he's feeling the temperature. He's a lot more sluggish than he is. Summertime he's a lot more active. And watch the cats try to figure out what he is. They're like, uh, this thing is weird. What is this? Not sure what to make of him. No, Midwest. It was 18 this morning, I think, degrees out. Decently cold. We had some snow the past couple days. Not a lot, but a little bit. Which makes taking the dog out a joy. I'm actually bringing him back in as a joy. To wipe his feet off or he gets stuff everywhere. He doesn't understand that concept. Why are you doing that to my feet? Since they're confused, wondering why you're doing that to him. Oh, wait a minute, I'm alone. Hmm. I wonder where you think this. All these casters and me alone? That's a bit much. 
Ah, oh, I whiffed my stupid trip. Did you see that? I really whiffed that trip. It was nowhere close to the guy. Yeah, I used to live in Kansas City. And for some reasons, I would like to be back there, but mainly the one, main one being they have Google Fiber there now. You can get a hundred up, hundred down from them for like hundred bucks a month or something ridiculous. At this ridiculous speed. I liked uh, quite a bit of the food I had there. It was good. Had my favorite restaurants and stuff. Good barbecue. Not really into jazz or any music scene really, but Went to a couple concerts. They might be giants. A couple others. Yeah. I'm really glad to not travel very often. I've done quite a bit of travel, and I used to travel for work sometimes too. And that was rough. Lots of love going on there. Party chat. But, uh, yeah. I am really getting, uh, yeah. I have a poster restoration somewhere, don't I? Woohoo, one negative level gone. I'm only level 20. Uh, let's see, what am I? 16 now? Something like that. Whatever. I only got 11 negative levels. I'm fine. And I have the third highlight, I just don't know where it is. There it is. One of those weird ones where they're all close to one side. Yeah. New Zealand was interesting. So was Australia. The main thing I remember about New Zealand was sheep. All sorts of sheep. All over the place. Just constant sheep. Right there. I want to get back to Tokyo. Other than that, meh. I don't enjoy travel as much as I used to. And not just for the security reasons, just the whole experience of sleeping in hotel rooms and all that junk. The travel itself being lots of boring driving or flying. Waiting, 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 endless lines. So I don't go to conventions very much anymore either. Just, uh, not into that stuff as much as I used to be.
That sounds like a whole lot of no fun, skunk. Whole lot of no fun. I'm running through the uh, tree right now, if you can hold off for me. If you can't, I guess I missed out on it, but I'm running as best I can. I'm back up to level 18. 19. Am I getting a restore when I... Oh, do I have that on? I do. And I, yeah. Every time I get a critical, I get a restore cast on me. That's right. That's why my negative levels are going back up so fast. I'm level 20 again. <laughs> 25% on the rock. Looks like he's in now. So I have the aggro, so I get the kite. Yay! See ya, buddy. There we go. That's what I wanted. Take all this junk loot and finish out. go level and call it a night guys I do appreciate everyone watching and I am sorry that I'm not streaming as long as I normally do but as I said things have happened today and just am not into it like I normally am um, losing a pet is pretty hard sometimes most of the time every time so far in fact but, uh, yeah, they become part of the family, and then you lose them, and it's not fun. So, not trying to bring it, the whole place down, but uh, definitely not into uh, this as much as I normally am. So, while I'm running through the marketplace, I'll bring up the promo stuff here. And just for giggles... There. See, he does exist. That is our bearded dragon. You should be able to see him there. It looks like you can on the thing. So I threw an extra dragon in today's Dungeons and Dragons. What even am I taking this level? I don't even know. I'll just take Epic Toughness and be done with it. That's something at least. There. I may as well go ahead and head to Evening Star. So anyway, yeah. Beer Dragon there on the left below the black bar that's part of the cage door. He's just hanging out there. Doing nothing like he does a lot of times. He gets in the position and just stays there. 
Yep, appreciate it, Skunk. It was good to have people in. Um, I somehow lost my handle. Huh, how do you... Uh, move to bottom? No. I scaled this where I can't... Uh, there we go. Can't do anything about it. There we go. Let's bring that back down to a reasonable size. And I'll put it back on... Uh, it was 50%, I believe. Put it back to 50 for now. Yes, yeah, Skunk, uh, thanks for chatting. It helped a bit to have some distraction, but uh, I can tell I'm not playing that well, and it's getting kind of frustrating that I'm not playing very well today. So um, I will say good night. Let me put, throw up promos like I was going to do before I get distracted. I need to do a stream schedule, although I do need to take Shredder Palooza out real quick. There we go. Um, last Shredder Palooza was this past Saturday on Thelanus. So, what the Bonnie think? Bonnie said she was taking a couple weeks of break before coming back to something else. Um, I think this is an on week for damsels, so tonight at 2 a.m. tomorrow, technically. Uh, Damsel should be on. I will not be on t next Tuesday or the Tuesday after, so keep that in mind. I will be off for two weeks. Will not be streaming. Um, then we got tomorrow, Cornavon's lunchtime, and then the Fling Group. Fridays and Sundays we got Titan. Saturdays and Mondays we got Blue Queen. And then, of course, there's me. Um, you can see me several other places. My own channel on Twitch, my YouTube, my site, and I'm also on Steam. Thanks, Lessa, for confirming that. So they are, Damsels are on tonight, 2 a.m. Eastern, on this channel. Let me get back to the DDO stream promo. So yeah, Damsels is a go for tonight. So again, everybody, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Um, see you in three weeks. I'll be back and uh, hang out, and hopefully we'll all have a better time and I'll be playing better and all that fun stuff. Good night.